I wanted to make a short video here about a question that I um, frequently get, sometimes from students, actually uh, more often from reviewers, I think, or from uh, people who get questions like this from reviewers and they ask me what my opinion about it is. Uh, and so I thought I would take the opportunity here to clarify a point that is often confused uh, and it's related to the difference in the mechanisms of short-time Fourier transform versus um, uh, wavelet convolution. So here's the question. How can you measure 2 hertz activity when the time window that you're uh, averaging or looking at is 200 milliseconds? And this is a very sensible uh, question and it's an understandable concern that people would have because the reasoning is the idea behind asking this question is well 200 milliseconds is only one cycle at 5 hertz and so if you're looking at 2 hertz activity 200 milliseconds is actually only two-fifths of one cycle and so if I told you that uh, that here is some estimate of activity uh, at 2 hertz and I only have 200 milliseconds of activity, then yes, you should be very concerned. Uh, the issue here is that the signal to noise is just going to be uh, very extremely low, you know, really not trustworthy at all. So, but this is what, here's why this is a misunderstanding uh, when you are using uh, or performing time frequency decomposition via wavelength uh, convolution. So when you're doing a short time Fourier transform, let's say, so in this example, let's say we're doing a short time Fourier transform to versus wavelet convolution to look at uh, activity at 3.5 Hertz within a 300 millisecond window um, in this uh, time series. Um, so with the short time Fourier transform, uh, yeah, so if, if you are looking for activity within a window of 300 milliseconds, and you're looking for 3.5 hertz activity, there is only about one cycle um, that can fit into this 300 millisecond time window. So here you would actually get a fairly poor uh, frequency uh, precision, fa fa or fairly low signal to noise is what I mean. But things work differently with the uh, uh, wavelet convolution. Because remember, when you're doing wavelet convolution, the time resolution of the result of the convolution between the wavelet and the EEG data, the temporal resolution is the same as the resolution of the EEG data. And that's because we take this kernel and we slide it along the entire time series from the beginning to the end. And that gives us this continuous estimate of instantaneous power at each millisecond uh, or at each uh, uh, time step. And so uh, for a wavelet convolution, Averaging the activity, let's say the power, averaging the power within a 300 millisecond window does not mean that you are estimating 3.5 hertz activity only using the data from within this 300 millisecond window. In fact, the uh, estimate of activity inside this window is also influenced by activity earlier, before the time window, and after the time window. Of course, the influence decreases the further away you get from this time window. Um, but it is perfectly reasonable uh, and valid to say that we are estimating 3.5 hertz activity within a, uh, a window of, two, of 300 milliseconds. We can take this even one step further and say that here is the estimate of 3.5 hertz activity from a window of, you know, whatever this is, 20 milliseconds, let's say. So, of course, you cannot get a uh, 3.5 hertz um, uh, or even one cycle at 3.5 hertz within 20 milliseconds. But inside this time window resulting from a uh, wavelet convolution, uh, the, uh, because the, the result of convolution is continuous, uh, then we can actually estimate the instantaneous power at 3.5 hertz within a, uh, a window that is much smaller than, than a single cycle. Um, in fact, you can even estimate the activity of 3.5 hertz uh, at, at one single time point, so w within a window of one millisecond. Um, and again, you know, you can see here in that picture, uh, in this picture, that the estimate of 3.5 hertz activity within this time window does not reflect only the activity in this time window. It's a weighted combination of previous and following time windows, 
Um, and that weighting function is both sinusoidal and dampening or decreasing uh, with distance away from the measured time point. But the important point that I want to, uh, to demonstrate here, to, to mention here, is that the, uh, the length of time that you use for averaging the activity after you perform convolution is totally unrelated to the uh, number of cycles that could theoretically fit into, um, into that time window that you use for averaging. Of course, that said, you know, the larger the time window, uh, or you should in general prefer taking larger time windows because it increases the signal to noise, you're gonna have a, a better, more reliable estimate. Uh, but there's really nothing uh, invalid or improper about um, taking the result of convolution and, and estimating power at one single uh, time step or you know, any, any arbitrarily sized window. So this is an answer to a question that I often get. I hope that clarifies some things and uh, yeah, I guess if it's still unclear, you can let me know and I can try to clarify it further.